Hey guys, how do you know or what should you analyze to assess who's better in some specific position? In this video we'll learn how to evaluate positions in chess. Keep watching. I want to mention two reasons why it is important to properly evaluate positions in chess. The first example is, imagine you're playing your game, you're analyzing two interesting moves, you're calculating like three moves ahead in both lines and you have two final positions and you need to decide which of those two final positions is the best for you. If you're not good at evaluating positions, probably you're going to be making wrong decisions in your games. The second reason is, imagine you're playing a game and you misevaluate the position you have on the board right now. Say it's an equal position and you think you are lost. If this is happening, you will be calculating lines where probably you are in a bad position three moves ahead, but you will think that's fine. You will think that's okay because you will think you were already lost at the beginning of the line and you will be okay with those lines. You will get into them, thinking that bad position is a consequence of the position you had at the beginning. Even if you are great calculating, if you are not evaluating fine positions, everything could be a mess afterwards. It's like building a very strong house on a very soft ground. It's not gonna work. So let's analyze this position. This is from international tournament Carlos Torre in Mexico. I was playing as white here. I want you to evaluate this and when we are going to evaluate the position I suggest you to look at some things. The first thing, the material. This time the material is equal, I don't think we need to make a pause to talk about that in this position. The second thing is the pawn structure and I think we can consider some things here. White has an isolated pawn here on a4 as black has doubled pawns here in the g file. Both sides have two pawn islands. For example, white has one pawn island here and another pawn island over here, as black has a pawn island over here and another pawn island over here. So the pawn structure we could say is more or less equal and then we go to the next step, king's safety. And here we need to make a pause because there are some things. For example, white king is not very well protected by pawns. We have been advancing the pawns and uh, right now the king is not in danger, but later in 10, 15 moves, if black pieces get some activity and they can open some lines, then it could be a problem. Again, right now, it doesn't look like a problem for white. Uh, when we analyze black's position, the king is a little better protected by pawns. They are also missing the pawn on a7. However, uh, this is something we will analyze in the next step. Black pieces have access to black king, like the bishop, like the rook, and like the queen. So. I think we shouldn't say black king is safer than white king here. We're gonna say they are more or, less, more or less equal one more time. And finally the last thing we need to take into consideration is pieces activity and coordination. And here we need to say white is ahead in development, black still has some problems on the queen side over here. Also white pieces are very active, look at the bishop controlling this long diagonal, targeting the king side. The queen is very well on b1. It has a lot of space to move and two very interesting lines. One of them getting access to the king side. Also the rook is fine with some interesting space over here and some interesting options maybe over the h file at some point. This rook is not very active by now but it looks like there might be some options over the second rank or maybe over the first rank at some point. And the main problem we could say is like this dark square as bishop for white and probably there are some options later like bishop here or bishop here at some point later in the middle game or the end game also this could be an option to improve the bishop over here but right now it's a piece that is not very well we need to say that about black pieces they don't have too much space to move they are not particularly active there is a plan we need to mention and it is this plan moving the knight to f6 protecting the king side blocking the pawn controlling things over here if black can play that idea it looks like they could be getting something interesting. Remember what we mentioned about white king with the pawns so advanced on the king side? So keeping all these things in mind, we could say white is slightly better, but the position is unclear and there could be some issue with the king's safety for both sides sometime later in the game. There was a static analysis of this position which means that we were not calculating moves, we were just looking at pieces, looking at pawn structure and deciding who's better. But 
Also, we need to do a dynamic analysis of the position because we need to keep in mind who's moving and if they have some very strong move, like some check, some capture, or some threat, probably just winning the game. And that's what is going to happen here. There is a surprise. It is white to move and white is winning. I will say it right now. The right move here is f6. And the idea is to clear this line for the queen, which is one of the pieces we mentioned as a very good piece in our analysis. After f6, a black needs to capture here probably. Even if they don't capture, the move could be the same for white. Queen g6. Remember, there is a pin over here, and white is taking advantage of that. So after queen g6, black is completely lost here. The king comes to h8, then queen h6, and then rook takes pawn. And this is just winning, because in the next move, white is getting the pawn on g5. Also, they are threatening checkmate here with rook g6. So black decided to resign in this game. The question for today, do you feel more comfortable now evaluating positions? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next.